Yes guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. The international break is finally over and that means we can get over the blue balls and the lack of content. England's football just draining the life out of us. Drug bond recomparisons on the timeline. Martinelli goals being shown every single day. It's been a draining last two weeks without club football, and we are finally back. It's Chelsea versus Southampton at Stamford Bridge. Both sides are looking to climb up to the table. They've had decent runs of form but with like little hiccups here and there and both sides are looking to try and get some long-term consistency especially with the next international break coming around in the next month but in this video we're going to be discussing our preview we're going to be talking about predictions things to expect from both sides both sides recent performances leading up to this result and our overall prediction for the game so before we start this video if you guys haven't done so already smash that like button press the subscribe button and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content now let's go straight into the video it's Chelsea versus Southampton at Stamford Bridge and both sides are looking to build on their recent performances before the international break Southampton they started the season off with three losses on the bounce and it wasn't a great start to the season for them but they've stabilized themselves with two wins before the break and the same thing with Chelsea we had the good win against Brighton before a couple of rocky performances against Liverpool and West Brom knocked out by Spurs in the cup which we don't want to talk about and then we led we ended the international break with the 4-0 win against Crystal Palace so both teams are kind of on the same sort of page and it's it's shown in the Premier League table as well only one point separates both sides both sides have had rocky starts this season like we've already said but I think it's the same case for everyone in the league table right now with four games into the Premier League season and only Everton and Aston Villa are unbeaten so far I think that's the only time that's been only two clubs unbeaten in four games since 13-14 and that's and that season the title race went all the way down to the last day so even though we're still looking up at clubs like Everton, Liverpool, Aston Villa right now it's still early days there's still plenty of ground to make up there's still plenty of belief left there's nothing too much to worry about and Chelsea are looking for another dominant home performance as they look to build on the 4-0 win against Crystal Palace Lampard will be very optimistic based on the way we managed that game I thought it was the best performance that we've had throughout the season by an absolute mile hell you could even count half a last season to it as well with the way that we controlled the game from the first minute to the last the defensive shape and organization didn't really have much to deal with but they kept their shape and they did well to stop Crystal Palace transitioning into attacks and it's the same thing for the Kante and Jorginho pivot as well they did an amazing job breaking up play breaking up transitions and recycling possession and it was the first game that we looked like we had control from start to finish and Chelsea you will want to hold that same level of control tomorrow as well even though the international break has done its best to try and ruin our mood Edward Mendy who we've been really excited for and had a decent performance against Crystal Palace I mean got a clean sheet didn't really have much to do but same way didn't really do much wrong and we've already seen plenty of times over the last year and a half that that our keepers can have barely anything to do and still concede when it finally comes up to it so it was nice to see Edward Mendy have a solid composed performance in front of goal even though he didn't have much to deal with Edward Mendy is injured though he is out of the he is out of this game for tomorrow Frank Lampard's already confirmed it in the pre-match press conference he got injured in international duty and that means that Kepa is probably going to be starting in goal Boo this man I mean, we just got to be optimistic at this point. It, we already know what we're going to deal with with Kepa. I mean, let, let's be optimistic. He kept a clean sheet against Cristiano Ronaldo on international duty. So, Kepa redemption season, maybe. I mean, I, I'm probably just lying to myself at this point. But we really have to be optimistic. Southampton will be looking at this game. They will be looking at Kepa and they will know that they can have a chance at him. This is why I'm really hoping we stick to 4-2-3-1 because we need two players in the middle of that in the middle of that defense. If we leave that space open, they're going to just lick shots. Same way everyone always does when they see Kepa in goal. They're just going to lick shots at his head. We need Jorginho and Kante to stay stable in the defensive midfield roles. We can't leave any spaces open in the middle. I mean, to be honest, we don't even know if it's Kepa that's going to be starting. Frank Lampard hasn't confirmed who his goalkeeper is going to be for tomorrow. It could be Kepa. It could be Willy Caballero. Hell, for all we know, Petr Cech could be coming out of retirement again. We've seen him training with the first team. 
He'd be a hell of a number two, I can't lie. I'd still take him out of retirement right now with the other options that we have. But I'm going to try and be optimistic. We've got a new goalkeeper, so I don't want to keep pushing this Kepa out agenda. Who knows? He might have an amazing performance. Let's try and be optimistic. He might have a good performance. And anyway, he just has to do his job, if we're being honest. Defensive organisation has been really solid this entire season. Discount the individual mistakes that have cost us games here and there like the draw to West Brom or the loss to Liverpool. I think throughout the game our defensive organisation has been miles better than it has been last season. Just getting through some of the stats, we've had clean sheets in five of our last six home games and with their defensive organisation we can keep Southampton out for 90 minutes. I'm just worried about Kepa. That's the only worrying part for me because the one thing we've seen with so many teams over the last year and a half is that they know Kepa can get got. And it's only going to be that one chance. If you look at Brighton, for an example, amazing defensive defensive shape. One mistake, though, and they conceded a goal. And Kepo just couldn't reach that far post as usual. The same thing with that Liverpool match. Uh, what was it? The Christensen red card. And then we concede with our first shot on target in the second half. It was too much to ask for that Chelsea side to hold up against Liverpool, Liverpool with 10 men. But same way, Kepa tax just came into account. I'm really hoping for the best for Kepa for this game, if he does start. But please, please, just give us something to work with because we've been trying with this Ke we've been trying with this Kepa redemption season agenda for so long, and it's just getting tiring at this point. Please, I'm hoping and praying for a good performance from Kepa. Regardless of if Kepa starts or not, I think Southampton are still going to fancy their chances. They've got their danger men like Danny Ings and Nathan Redmond who are going to cause us serious problems. And two wins before the international break is going to inject them full of confidence. And coming into this game against Chelsea, yes, our defensive shape is solid. Even with Kepa in goal though, I think Southampton will still fancy their chances. Under Ralph Hasenhutl, they've brought themselves out as a bit of an away specialist. Their loss away to Crystal Palace on the opening day of the season was their only loss away since February, which basically means since the turn of lockdown, they haven't lost away from home. And they've won at Stamford Bridge last season. They're looking to try and get back-to-back -back wins at Stamford Bridge for the first time since 1985, if I remember correctly. And with danger men like Danny Ings and Nathan Redmond, they are going to cause us serious problems. Chelsea also need to look to try not to get too complacent. We were on the ball for heavy periods in the Crystal Palace game, but it was a case of just breaking them down. And we do need to see the same sort of performance and the same sort of mentality for this game against Southampton as well. Southampton, I think, also have a bit more luck on their side because they don't have future fixtures to worry about as well. Frank Lampard is going to have one eye on the Sevilla Champions League match that is on Tuesday. And there could be some rotation in the squad lineup based on that. I heard there's going to be one surprise uh, name put in the lineup for sa for Saturday, maybe. I'm not sure. It might be Rudiger. I don't know. But I can't speculate too much on it. But Frank Lampard is going to have one eye on the Sevilla match, which means we're probably going to see some sort of rotation on Saturday. I'm not sure if it's based on the starting lineup or if you're going to see players hauled off a bit earlier, but that means Chelsea are going to want to kill this game off very early. That also means the case of Southampton, they can just try and absorb pressure for long periods and hope that we get complacent towards the second half, try and throw more and more going forward and leave ourselves a bit more a bit more open defensively and that could be something they could capitalize on I'm not sure but it all depends on game management I think our game management has been a lot stronger this season compared to last season it all it depends on us getting that early goal which is something I've said for so long and to be honest with Timo Werner up front which I do think is going to be happening now with Christian Pulisic and Ziyech back from their injuries we should be able to see the best of Werner and this is something that I'm really looking forward to Werner has had a couple ghost performances over the last couple games he's been played on the left hand side where he can play but with teams that are going to sit deep against us like Crystal Palace and a Tottenham side with four games in a week his options are very limited down that left hand side and he's more or less just doing the bleep test on there he isn't really getting involved with the game being on the left hand side of about two three players around him is it's made his game a bit predictable it's obvious that he's going to try and cut inside onto that left hand side 
And I think him playing up front will, is going to bring the best out of him. I mean, that just speaks for himself. The guy's a striker, innit? And hopefully that means tomorrow he can break his Premier League duck and get his first league goal for Chelsea because I know as soon as the first one comes, the waterworks are going to open and he's just going to start flowing goals. I'm not too worried about the first couple games. There was going to be a little adjustment period for Werner anyway, but him playing off the left-hand side has really stifled this play. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing him play down the middle. Let's go into the team news quickly. I'm going to start with Chelsea. Mendy is out, but Lampard says he won't name the goalkeeper, so it's probably going to be one of Ke Kepa or Caballero. Thiago Silva isn't in the squad either after returning back from international duty too late with Brazil, so we're probably going to see Zuma and Christensen start. Ziyech, Pulisic and Chilwell are all back though. I don't expect to see Ziyech start this game. I think it would be too early for him. He only had about 30, 40 minutes international duty. And I think with the same way Christian Pulisic, he got slowly brought back into the team. He only started the last 10 minutes against Crystal Palace. I don't think we're going to see much of Ziyech in this game. He was probably going to be rested with Sevilla and Manchester United in mind. But other than that, no other serious injuries from Chelsea. I'm going to round off the squad lineup quick. We're going to start off in goal. Even though I don't really think there's much of a difference in goalkeeper, I think we're going to start with Kepa anyway, just for the confidence boost. And like, I've, like I said in the opening days of the season, you can't. If Kepa's meant to be competing for that number one spot, you just can't bench him for Willy Caballero because that was just going to do even more damage to his confidence. Right back, I'm going to go for Aspel Equator. I think we're going to need his leadership in the back line, so he's going to have to go in as well. With rotation and Sevilla in mind, it makes sense. I'd rather have Reese James play in the Sevilla match. Uh, as the back two, we're going to go for Kurt Zuma and Andreas Christensen with Thiago Silva out injured. Two players that have had very good starts this season. Christensen ignored the red card against Liverpool. Honestly, he's had really decent performances against all the other teams this season. Brighton, he was impressive. First half, Liverpool, he was impressive before the stupid red card. And the same thing with West Brom as well. Yeah, we were 3-0 down in 45 minutes. It wasn't Christensen's fault, and I'm not hearing anyone trying to tell me that it was. Left back, we're going to go for Ben Chilwell. Because and no one else, like literally keep Emerson and Alonso as far away from this team as possible. And it, as the two DMs are going to go for Jorginho and Kante, we're going to need someone who's going to sit deep in front of that midfield. As the ball progresses, it's probably going to be N'Golo Kante. They've been the better defensive two as of late, so I'm going to continue with that for this game as well. With Pulisic back, I'm going to have him start with Hudson-Odoi on the wings. I think the one thing we should be trying to do is having Timo Werner play up front. We cannot have another game of Werner playing down, playing on the left-hand side because it just stifles his game. And the other two just speaks for itself. Kai Havertz, I think after international duty, just shows he should be playing behind the striker. And I want him playing behind Timo Werner. So we're going to go for that in a 4-2-3-1 formation. Score predictions... Probably going to go 3-1 Chelsea. I don't see us keeping a clean sheet with Kepa in goal. Kepa tax, it just is what it is. But I do see us winning this game. I do think we're going to have a dominant performance. We just need an early goal. I need a Timo Werner goal because i got a lot back in on it already. I can't lie. But yeah, I don't see Chelsea losing this one. But guys, this is the end of the match preview for you guys today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and check us out tomorrow for the watch along and the phone in live on Blues Fans TV. Take care and up the shells.